Welcome to Bridget's Speech Kitchen. Today we are going to be making lemon ginger cookies courtesy of Sally's Baking Addiction. Make sure to go check her blog out. And I will be teaching you about four word boards. As you can see, I have all of my ingredients out here. I pre-measured these or I have the measuring cups out and ready to go. I would recommend if you're doing this with your children to have everything ready to go so you're not using valuable time, you know, grating lemon zest or chopping the crystallized ginger. It's just nice to have it like this. So, ingredients you'll need are one and two thirds cup of all purpose flour, three fourths cup of sugar, granulated, a tablespoon of lemon zest, so that's about one small lemon, a tablespoon of lemon juice. You can also get that from one small to medium sized lemon. Uh, one large egg that's at room temperature. You're gonna need a half teaspoon of ground ginger, a half teaspoon of ground allspice, a half teaspoon of vanilla, a half teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, one stick or a half cup of unsalted butter, finally a fourth cup of crystallized ginger or candied ginger. If you're not a ginger fan, maybe your children aren't fans of ginger, just omit the crystallized ginger and the ground ginger and you'll have a lemon cookie, which would be equally as delicious, but ginger is a flavor I enjoy, so I'm going to put that in there. So, as I'm measuring out our flour, I want to tell you more about core boards. So, this is a very simple core board. This is a 5x4 core board. It has 20 symbols, and core boards are used by individuals that have communication needs. They may not have verbal speech or they have a limited amount of verbal speech. So having a core board can allow them to communicate more easily. So core words are words that we use on a daily basis. They're high frequency words such as I, need, eat, help. They're all words that are important to know and that we use regularly. And then we have our fringe words, or words that we're not using on a daily basis. So, you know, lemon, vanilla, ginger, those are not words we use every day. So, our first core word combination is going to be put it in. And when you're using a core board, if you're teaching this to your children, it's important to model it. Because if I just gave you this, or if I just gave a child this core board and said use it, they're not going to know what to do with it. So it's important to model it. You're going to say it and you're going to point to each symbol as you say it. So put it in is going to be our first one. So we're starting with our flour. And we call core boards and other types of communication that help a person that has limited or no verbal speech, AAC, which stands for Augmentative and Alternative Communication. After this, they can use it to communicate their basic wants and needs, at least with this one. And this is what we call low-tech AAC. High-tech is something like an iPad. Low-tech, which is this, it's a piece of paper. It has all of the symbols in the text and all you need is a printer, and then you point to the symbols that you want to use to communicate. So, you would have the flour pre-measured in the cup, and then you would say, put it in. And you would hand the child the cup of flour, and they would hopefully say, put it in, or I put it in, right? So, I put it in. And you would say, you put it in, right? Maybe they need help. They could say, I need help. So that's just an easy way for them to communicate. Maybe they only know one of those words. Maybe they can put them together, but not consistently. 
So you can do that for all of these ingredients. That's why I recommend having the egg ready to go cracked in a little dish like I do here. Uh, same with the lemon zest. So the crystallized ginger, you want it finely diced or minced. So I would recommend also having that prepared beforehand. My flour in the bowl, and I'm gonna put the rest of the dry ingredients in this bowl. So we have 3 fourths cup of sugar. And again, this is just your standard white sugar. So this recipe I found on Sally's Baking Addiction. She is a self-taught baker. She has an amazing blog. She's pretty well known on Instagram. And on her blog called Sally's Baking Addiction, she has thousands of recipes, maybe even millions, because she does a lot of cooking. She has all kinds of recipes for all kinds of baked goods. So cookies, breads, cakes, cupcakes, on and on. And so I found this one and I wanted to do lemon because in my home in California, we have a beautiful and gigantic lemon tree. And the lemons that we have are called Eureka lemons. So they're not the ones you get in the grocery store. These are ones that you would find growing on someone's tree in the backyard. So this is what they look like. They range in size. We've had ones that are as large as grapefruits and little tiny ones. So I wanted to use that today. So we have our sugar in there. And next I'm going to be adding our lemon. I'm going to be adding next our ground ginger. So this is gonna be a half teaspoon. And ginger, it has a bit of a spiciness to it. Not hot spicy, just sort of a warmth. So that'll just add another flavor to the cookie. And then I'll be adding a half teaspoon of allspice, ground allspice, to do a half teaspoon baking soda. This will help the cookies rise. Salt, make sure to use kosher salt and fine grain. So once you have all your dry ingredients in the bowl, you're going to take a whisk and gently whisk this together just enough until all of the ingredients are combined. Now I'm gonna take you over to my stand mixer, which is over here. This is a KitchenAid stand mixer. If you don't have one of these, you can use a hand mixer. Bring over my butter and my sugar because we are going to beat together the butter and the sugar. I'm going to be attaching the whisk attachment or this is another place where you can have the child put the butter and the sugar into your bowl. So the butter, very simple. Uh, help them unwrap it if they need your assistance. They can say, I need help with the core board. And that's going to go into our mixer bowl here. Remember for that butter that it's at room temperature, we want it softened. If it's straight out of the fridge, it's going to be very hard and it's not going to beat properly. A good trick for that, there's a couple. You can warm up a glass and put it over the butter for a couple of seconds and that will soften it. You can microwave it. It only needs 10 seconds or less. That's normally how I soften it if I want to do it quickly. Best method though is to have your butter out and have it set out in advance of making the recipe. So that was one stick of butter or a half cup. And then I'm going to be putting in three fourths of a cup of the granulated sugar. I'm doing fractions. That's always a good math skill for young children to learn. Science, because there's a lot of reactions, you can talk about the baking soda and what that does scientifically. So there's a lot of skills you can target, but I'm gonna be targeting language with the core boards today. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like. You can see my butter and my sugar, and we're gonna beat it. So, here 
is another step. So if you are using either a stand mixer or a hand mixer, you can have your child help you with turn on and turn off. So what you would do is you would have this cord board either on your counter or they can be holding it and you would say, turn it on. You're gonna need something to scrape down the sides. I recommend like a soft rubber spatula. It's great for scraping down the sides. Continue to do this step until the butter and the sugar are creamed. Just a fancy term for the butter and sugar are well combined. It's smooth and it's pale in color. This is a great time to continue to use the core board and to continue to model the core board. So turn it on, right? And then they can say, I turn it on. So maybe they need help turning on the mixer. I need help turn it on. And you can make this much more simple, especially when you're just starting out. Maybe they just do help. When they're first learning to use this, make sure one, you're always modeling what you want them to say, and then they can imitate it. And hopefully over time, they are independently able to communicate with the core board. The other important thing to do is to praise the AAC user for any attempts they make. If they verbalize, I turn it on, point to each symbol, that's amazing. Maybe they don't have any verbal speech, but they point to each of the symbols. That's great. Maybe they only point to one in the sequence that you modeled for them. That is amazing too because when they're first starting out, they need that phrase. Otherwise, they're not gonna to wanna to keep using this. Also talk about what's actually happening in the moment. So you could say, it on. Right. When this is done, something they can say is all done. And we're gonna use this all done step later in our communication. But after each step, they can do all done. I make it, right? And the grammar isn't so much what we're focusing on here. I make it is a grammatically correct way to say, I made it. But really the main idea of core boards is to help the person communicate, not necessarily to pick on grammar. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like now. Any sort of consistency, you can see that. Okay, so now we're gonna add in the rest of the wet ingredients. Okay. So the rest of the wet ingredients are the lemon juice, the lemon zest, egg, and our vanilla. So I'm gonna go in with the egg next. You can see I already have it cracked, ready to go. You pop that in there. I'm gonna give that a little mix through. Then I'm gonna add in my vanilla. So we want teaspoon I'm going to put in our lemon juice. So one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. If you live in an area where you cannot get fresh lemon juice, you can use bottled lemon juice. It's fine. Um, and then finally the lemon zest. So if you don't have lemon zest, your cookie is just going to be a little less lemon forward. Um, but this is what it looks like. And what I love about lemon is just the smell. It's fresh. It's vibrant and I just love it in cookies. I have all of my wet ingredients in the bowl. All those steps where I put in the egg, the lemon zest, lemon juice, vanilla. That's again, another opportunity to have put it in as the language you're using. So, and then again, there was multiple opportunities to do turn it on with the mixer. I'm gonna be adding our combination of dry ingredients that we combined together earlier. So when you're adding your dry ingredients, you don't wanna dump it in all at once. It's not gonna mix that well because there's too much in the bowl that's been added. So what I like to do is to put the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients in small increments. So I just use a large tablespoon do a couple of spoonfuls, mix it. When you're going to put your dry ingredients in, again, another opportunity to do put it in. And when you're first teaching it, 
The more reps, the better. So now you can see I'm gonna put my dry ingredients. So core boards, core boards are great for a variety of people, commonly used by SLPs. I've seen OTs use them, PTs use them, um, but it's great for parents to have these as well. So I work in a school, I currently work in a middle school primarily, and even with middle schoolers, some of them use these. It's good to have these for the parents that went in the home because we want them to use their core boards in any setting they're in, not just at school, not just at home. We want them to have carryover from each environment that they are in. And what's important is when you give this to a parent, again, tell them how you want their child to use it or how you're hoping that child will use it. Because if you just hand them that core board or a core board and you say, use it, give this to your child to use, they're not gonna know what to do and the child may reject it because it's new, uh, because it, they're frustrated by it. So make sure to give the parent those models and then say, okay, you're gonna model what I modeled for you today to your child. And while that is doing its last mix, I'm going to grab the crystallized ginger. So I'm going to be stirring in, folding in some crystallized ginger. So this is what one piece looks like. Is you're going to finely chop it, you're going to want one fourth of a cup of the crystallized ginger. You can see I've minced it into smaller pieces. This is what our dough looks like. You can see, Maybe if I get closer, you can see some of the flecks of the lemon in there, some flecks of the allspice. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take our fourth cup of chopped ginger, and then I'm just going to stir that through. My next step is going to be taking the cookie dough, small portions of it, and rolling it into balls. So I'm thinking about this size, this is about, you know, like a one inch ball. So I'm gonna be rolling these out into balls, putting them on a parchment paper lined baking sheet. And then these will sit in the fridge for an hour at least. My oven preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius, that's what you use. So while that is coming up to temp, my cookie dough balls are still in the fridge. They have about five minutes left in their cooling process. And I'm going to leave them in there until the oven comes to temperature. So while I'm waiting for the oven to come to temperature, I am going to make the lemon glaze to drizzle over the cookies when they are done baking. So for this, you're going to need confectioner and the juice of a lemon. Measure out three fourths of a cup of the powdered sugar and place it into this bowl here. Be careful when you are pouring the powdered sugar because this will go everywhere if you're not careful. So I'm actually gonna put my measuring cup into the inside of this bowl, so then it will stay contained within the bowl and the cup. As you're mixing this, you may need more powdered sugar to make it a thicker consistency, or you may need more lemon juice to make it of a thinner consistency. The consistency is sort of up to you. I'm just going to squeeze half of the lemon, stir it, see how I like the look of it, add more lemon juice if needed, or add more powdered sugar. I'm gonna, timer. I'm gonna take my whisk and whisk this up. And let me bring the bowl to you to kind of show you. So as you can tell, I'm going to need to add more lemon juice because there's still quite a bit of unincorporated powdered sugar in my bowl. So I'm gonna add my other half of the lemon and kind of see where it's at after that. So this is kind of the consistency we're looking for. Here are the cookie balls I rolled out earlier. You can see they're about an inch in size. They are on metal baking sheets lined with parchment paper that prevents them from sticking. 
to your baking pan. It also makes for really easy cleanup. So before they go into the oven, I am going to slice some more of this crystallized ginger and put it on top of each cookie. Now I'm just gonna do one to two very thin, small slices because you want the ginger present. You want people to know when they look at the cookie that it has ginger in it, but you don't want it to be a whole mouthful of this strong ginger. So I'm just gonna take my pieces, cut them as thin and as small as I can, and then I'm just gonna press it into the cookie. Here's what the cookies look like before they bake. Baking sheet, they're about two to three inches apart from each other, so when they bake, they won't touch each other and spread. Put them in the oven for 11 to 13 minutes. You need to let them cool, drizzle them, with the lemon and powdered sugar mix and see how they taste. Okay, so here are the finished cookies. You can see it made 24 or two dozen. And I just drizzled over the lemon and powdered sugar glaze. Just did with a spoon. Once you're ready to eat the cookies, you can use your core board and you can do things like, I like it. If they like the cookies, I make it to talk about what you did. All done. I get it. So when you give them a cookie, they can say, I get it. If they have one and you decide it's okay if they had another, you can do more. They can request more. A lot of opportunities to use the core board after you've baked the cookies and not just during the process.